Hey, um, Congressman uh, McKinley, thanks for uh, talking with us. First question is, is it time for the country to reopen, for West Virginia and the country to reopen? Two questions. I don't think it's time for the country to open because we're still seeing around the country hotspots, uh, a, positive, uh, a very high ratio of positive testing for the virus, whereas West Virginia, we're only, we're only hitting, we're less than 3% positive on testing. So that's an indication that there can be openings, gradual openings across the country in areas that are not such intense areas like New York City or Seattle was or New Orleans. Uh, so if we can continue this testing and we stay under, I think the governor is, and we claim what Dr. Marsh have said, 3%. As long as we can stay under 3%, I think we can start this step-by-step -step gradual reopening of the economy. But we gotta be careful. I think right now the first step was to allow our, our medical facilities back uh, with the employment like. Then we can open up gradually, we can open up more maybe barber shops, because I certainly need to have a I need to get to a barber <laughs> shop in the worst way. So <laughs> if that happens next week, I, no problem here. I think you look fine. Um, you know, it's, it's fluid, obviously, but how fast do you think it will take for the country to return to normal? Oh, um, a long time. I don't even want to predict the number. We have taken such an abundance of caution that I think we've, we've maybe overly concerned people. It is a horrible disease. But we've got to get back to normal. Remember, back in November, December, and January, our economy was booming all across America. Low unemployment, stock markets high, employment was continuing, the expansion of jobs. We've got to get back to that. So this collapse of the economy was not caused by policy failure as it was back in 2008, 2009. This was caused by a disease, a virus coming in from China. So we've got to get back to that normal as fast as we can. But I'm afraid that we have caused a mindset to occur uh, that people are going to be less inclined to go back to restaurants, to go back to movie theaters. I, I had a meeting this morning with, with uh, higher education. Their concern is, will, they be, will the students want to come back into the classroom again because they've been so concerned about social distancing? I hope by September, that we have this taken care of. Now, I think a lot will be how much we can rely on the media to get the information out that like we heard yesterday in a conversation with NIH, FDA, other uh, government officials in Washington. They were saying that they think that by October, November of this year, we will have in place a dependable therapy, a treatment for this disease. And then uh, Dr. Fauci has indicated that perhaps by January we'll have a vaccine. All those are good. We, if, if people can get to that understanding, we'll get back, give people a comfort level that they're willing to get back. And, and for us in West Virginia, I hope we can get back sooner than that. Uh, certainly within the next 60 days, start to have more of a gradual reintroduction of people back into society so that they're not afraid to be around each other. Well, obviously, there's been a lot of work behind the scenes uh, on all sides. Uh, what do you think has been the biggest successes by government during this coronavirus pandemic? Good question. I think probably the best was the discovery uh, of how much we were depending on other companies, uh, other countries to provide us with supplies. Uh, the, the, the supply chain of so much medicine was coming from China. Our face masks were coming from Italy. We've got to, we've got to get back. I think that was one of the best things we learned from this. We became too dependent on the rest of the world for our care. So I think we've learned from that. The second thing I think we've learned is if we're going to get back, I think we're going to have to have uh, more in, uh, liability protection. I, I think with that's, that's, that's something we're going to have to put in place so that our businesses are not afraid to reopen the doors. Our restaurants are not afraid to have uh, customers back in for fear that they're going to be sued if someone gets sick. So it's a major problem of giving people confidence 
and the employer's confidence that if they reopen, they won't file that there won't be litigation with them. On the opposite end of that question, what has been the biggest failures by government during this pandemic? <sighs> Probably the failure, if there, if there is, it, it's just, pe people, please, they need to take into consideration. We've had just barely a hundred days since this has happened. And look what we've, look what we've done. Been able to put together a massive program to spend. Keep in mind, the SBA and processing funds Last year, the SBA processed $23 billion across the country over a year's time. But we asked them and they succeeded. They processed $350 billion in two weeks. So can we be, should we have anticipated this? I, I, I don't think so. I think because China withheld the information from us. I, I don't know that that was a failure. I, I, I don't know that how we gear up. I think we geared up fairly quickly, but the government is not large enough to be able to take on this pandemic in such a short fashion. I don't think we want to have government sitting there being able to process $350 billion every two weeks. So I'm, I struggle a little bit with failure. Maybe it's getting the information out that's consistent and we rely a lot on the media to get that, but people, another disco, the, Thing, maybe a failure was people we found out were relying an awful lot on the social media where they were seeing on internet they were buying into that and, and they were disregarding what advice they were getting from the medical professionals that were on the media on on the news and radio and print media hmm. let me turn to a slightly different area and that's concerning education uh, there's been differences of opinion about reopening public schools what do you think should happen uh, with reopening public schools? I think we can reopen schools once, as long as we have a testing rate as low as we have in West Virginia, as long as it's under 3%. That, that's an arbitrary amount, I accept that, but that's a, that's a good starting point. But as we get back into schools, they're gonna have to use common sense. I, I hope we don't have to have this fall, to have to have masks, I hope that that we have got this under control, better under control than we have now. It, it's it's obviously doing better, uh, but by fall, I want people to get back to normal. And one of it, one of the issues I think that could help is for us in Congress to get back in session, showing leadership that we can actually the world we can continue functioning. For people to say it's not safe to be in Washington, but it's all right for our gas stations to be operating, our grocery stores to be operating, our uh, first responders to be running around and, and, and our postal men were out doing it. No, I think all of us need to understand we are intelligent enough that we can control our environment and we ought to be able to get back to work. I think if, if we can get back to work, that will give the, the school systems and we've got to give them some liability protection so that if someone does get sick, and th they will, someone will come down with influenza, someone, there'll, there'll be a disease, that a trial lawyer doesn't file action against the school system for doing that. We've got to find some balance in this, and it's going to be a little testy, but I really expect that we'll, I'm hoping that all our schools are going to be open again this fall. Uh, you know, every sector is uh, hurting from this uh, financially, including the, uh, the states, West Virginia and the local municipalities. So how much farther should the federal government go to financially assist states such as West Virginia? That's, that's one of the hottest questions in Washington right now on our conference calls. So we're constantly having that. Um, for example, in West Virginia, uh, Jim Justice has been saying that we may have a shortfall of maybe as much as $500 million as a result of, of this. Uh, uh, we've already put $150 billion to help states and local government. $150 billion. Think about that. The, the state of West Virginia operates on about $4 billion. So, so the magnitude of what, how much is out there. The sensitivity is that states like New York, Illinois, and California that have not managed their states properly. They've overexpended, offered too many services. Their taxes are, are uh, very high. They've been running deficits. 
We in West Virginia have a requirement that we have to have a balanced budget. These, some of these other states don't have that. So they've been spending in the red. I wonder what I think that President Trump and many of us in Congress are trying to make sure we have to be sensitive to states like West Virginia that are definitely hard hit. If this is not, we're not because of bad policies didn't put us in the red. We need to help them, but we got to make sure that we're not bailing out Illinois, New York, California for mismanagement of their state. So it's not a clean answer. It's one that is going to take much more, many more hearings as we can put that together. But the sooner we can get back into Washington to be able to have some of those representation representatives come before us in a hearing, we'll understand better how much more money should be allocated to the state. But so far, West Virginia has been able to sustain itself. Last question for you. Uh, do you think the nation is prepared for a second wave of coronavirus? Uh, Probably the best way to describe that would be we're gonna we're better prepared now than we were for the first time. But I'm concerned about it because there are people that this fear that we've we've had uh, about how we're dealing with this has given us concern. We're but we're gonna be ready. Now there's remember what I said by this fall, October, November, they're saying we could very well have a treatment that is successful. We're going to have a vaccine maybe in January. So I think we're going to be much better prepared to address the second wave if it happens. Uh, but I think we've learned from social distancing how to use more testing than we've had before. I think it's all going to be beneficial. So the second wave is not going to have this catastrophic impact unless communities like New York, LA, or wherever, Seattle, if they ignore the lessons we've learned in the first run. And don't have social separation if that occurs. Hopefully we've learned a lot. Congressman McKinley, thank you so much for talking with us. Oh, thank you. And, and, and for all of your listeners, I just, I hope they'll all be safe through this. We'll get through it and we're going to get this economy going so the people we can have an economy that's, that leads the world again. Thank you. Thank you.